Hello folks, this is Justin Butlek from the KSTARS project and I'm back with another short tutorial on using DSLRs uh, in ECUS. So I have a Canon 600D and I will be using it uh, for uh, this tutorial today. I underestimated the number of people uh, who uses DSLR in asset photography. Turns out there is a lot of people. Um, I myself use the QSIZCD, very satisfied with that, but uh, to each his own. So uh, this presumes this you're running uh, DSLR. This is the first time running DSLR on ECOS. So I connected my 600D uh, to my remote Raspberry Pi. Along with uh, QHICCD, I also connected that there. And uh, will be connected through ECOS to the remote Raspberry Pi, which I called the Mate in my profile because it's running Ubuntu Mate. If we go and edit this profile, or you can uh, you know add a new profile if you want. Uh, you can see that the profile uh, is Mate. The mode uh, the mode is set to remote, and I also set it to use the Indie Web Manager. So Indie Web Manager is a piece of software. It's a web service that runs on the remote Raspberry Pi. And it manages the startup and shutdown of Indie drivers. So if you check this here, then Ecos will communicate to Indie Web Manager to start and stop Indie drivers as necessary, so that you don't have to go and do it manually through uh, using a command line or SSH. For the devices, I set them out to a telescope simulator. The CCD I selected Canon DSLR. But you can also select Nikon DSLR or um, you know the generic G photo driver. For the guider, I selected the QHI CCD. We're not going to use it in this demo. It's just connected there, so why not? So let's go ahead now and um, connect with uh, Raspberry Pi, and we're already connected. Let's connect the devices. And if you go, if this is the first time set up, then you need some information for your DSLR camera. You'll have this dialog pop up which says some required information. We need the sensor resolution and the pixel pitch because we cannot automatically detect this information. And this is only a one time setup. So for my camera, uh, the resolution is uh, 5184. You can, this, you can get this information either from your camera's uh, manual or from online sources. And uh, the pixel pitch is 4.3. And uh, that's it. So this is only a one-time setup. If we look at the uh, Indie control panel, let me just drag it here because I have multiple monitors. And if you go to the image info, we can see that all the settings are already saved. Now, if you go to the image settings in the control panel, I'd just like to make a quick distinction between two things as to avoid confusion. We have the capture format, which is a format uh, that your DSLR captures images in. And it's usually, you know, JPEG or RAW. And you know there you have multiple types of JPEGs according to size and quality, and you have also RAW here. You also have transfer format. So after it's captured in whichever capture format selected above, it will transfer the Indie driver, the Canon DSL driver, will transfer this image back to ECOS either in FITS, which is a flexible image transport system used by many astronomy applications, or natively, like as is. You'll notice here in ECOS when you first connect, it says using FITS transfer format. So it's already set up by default to use to using FITS, but we can change that. If we go to Options, we go to Capture, you can see here the DSL format, and now it's selected to FITS, and then we can change it to Native. So this setting only applies only applies to the Capture module here. For Focus, for Alignment, and Guiding, it's always, always uses the fits format because this is required for the operations required here but for the capture we can select the um, you know the native format when we do our sequences now let's go ahead and take a preview and let's remember we're using the fits transfer format so we are expecting it to uh, to receive it in fits now the difference between fits format and the native format is that fits 
is usually larger in size, so it's a bit slower. But again, it's needed in various modules within ECAS. So we'll just wait a bit until the image is received. And there we go, we have the image right now. And uh, this is it looks screenish because it's a, it's a debayered image and you can play with the debayer settings to get a better looking image. Um, let's let's go ahead and uh, select uh, like JPEG for example, so medium fine JPEG and keep the transform format as fits and let's take another um, you know shorter you know exposure. So we're taking now another short exposure. We're expecting it in JPEG. So there it is. Now that's that's the image in JPEG format. Now we can also go to options and then you know select you know native. So it will capture JPEG and send it to us natively. Let's go ahead and do that. So you can see here this is the, the native image captured and sent to us. Okay, so now moving on to the next uh, topic here. Uh, uh, most of these settings here are, you know, self-explanatory, and or, or you have, you know, a lot of uh, uh, tooltips explain what they do. But let's go to the file settings here. Uh, this is important when you take sequences. Uh, the prefix you use to select, you know, a prefix for your image. So let's, let's, uh, you know, so for example, we're imaging M44. So there it is. Uh, if you have a filter, you put the filter as a postfix, uh, like a duration, things like that. And here we put the directory to save the images. Uh, now, since we're connected to remotely, we have uh, an option to also set the re to save the images remotely. So we have here the upload option. And you see here, like, you know, there's a tooltip that explains it in details. So now by, by default, it's set, it's set to client, which means it's sending the images back to ECOS. We can also set it set it to local, which means it saved the images locally on the remote machine. It does not save it to the SD card. That's really important to know. It does not save the images to the camera's SD card, but it saves it to the embedded computer that it's running at remotely. We can also set it to both, and it will just you know send us a copy and save it locally. Let's try to do local. So once you do that, you know we need to set it set which remote directly it should save to. So let me put that I know home mate. This is like the remote directory. Let's set two images. Okay. And uh, let's do that. Now remember, let's see. We have a JPEG and we have native. So it will do that. It should save that uh, uh, natively. So let's go ahead and uh, start the sequence here. So it took the first image and notice that we are not receiving anything. Now let's go to uh, Mate. Let me just go there. And you can see here the two images, the two JPEG uh, images already saved here. All right. And they're also saved along with, you know, the prefix and, you know, the, the frame type, etc., like that. Here also you can set the ISO settings uh, and now it's set to auto, but you can change it to whatever value you desire. You can change the frame size and, you know, uh, 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 subframing uh, a region of interest values here. Uh, and then if you want to reset the frame, you just click reset. Um, finally here, I want to show the live video feature, uh, which I've been working on recently. So if you click that, it will start the uh, live video feed from the camera. And here we can see the FPS and we can also do a recording. So now recording happens in SER format and you need the SER player uh, in order to play these things, uh, these, uh, this format. But you can also save it to like more common format like uh, you know, AVI or you know, MP4. So also uh, another recent feature to the uh, live view is that you can now uh, like zoom in. So let me let me zoom into this region, for example. And now we can see the image, you know, zoomed in here. 
uh, let's suppose that we want to do some recording so let's look at the recording options uh, by default we record until we stop it manually but we can set duration or number of frames let's go ahead and test that let's put the directory this is now the remote directory if the DSLR was connected to your primary machine or to the same machine as ECOS let's say that then you can uh, you know go ahead and select a directory from the file system but since the DSR is running on the remote Raspberry Pi the directory needs to be on the remote Raspberry Pi so let me set that so this is the directory that exists on the remote Raspberry Pi and this is where the file is saved uh, now the file can be uh, uh, configured with uh, you know different patterns which you, you can read about here uh, but that should be sufficient let's close that and let's start the recording and now uh, recording has started and let me just wait a few seconds and uh, you know just you know stop that if you go back to the uh, mate here we get some notification as well uh, if you go to videos and yeah here we see the file let me just copy and you know paste it here so I can view it and let me run um, the SER player so this SER player is uh, uh, it's a free multi-platform player okay so transfer finished let me go and look here okay so this is it this is the video now that was recorded and then you know you can save it as AVI or animated GIF we can also use MPEG uh, FFmpeg to you know to to convert it to any other format you want okay so now the live view is turned off and I think that's pretty much it this is the basic settings for your DSLR um, either re either locally or remotely it's the same thing there are no differences in setting it up just make sure that you um, follow any instructions in the India website regarding any any common problems you might face with uh, using your DSLR camera on uh, Linux so that's pretty much it. Uh, good luck and uh, clear skies.